guys, welcome back to Hey Manager with me, Alex, and today we've got episode 35 of the FM24 Birmingham City Save. Now then, let's get into the action since last time and see where we left off. So last time round, we did indeed play, I believe it was the Aston Villa, it was the Midlands derby, wasn't it, where we just got a 1-0 win with the deflected Jordan James goal. Now, Aston Villa had the absolute upper hand in this one. But we managed to hold on. Our defenders, our goalkeeper in particular with Thomas Araujo, was absolutely phenomenal. Our forwards, not too great themselves. But obviously, we did pretty well in this game. 1-0, uh, we managed to just get through. I mean, it was it was really, to be honest with you, it was a bit of a steal. It was a bit of a steal. But we got through. Since then, only one loss and six wins for us right here so i'll quickly go through each one manchester city came to play now manchester city they've got a bit of a weird side they've got a very strange side they don't have what you think to be the classic city side because they've actually seen harlan go out with an injury benjamin seshko has come in but he was on the bench they've bought him for 83 million pounds all up from from Leipzig, I think it was his release clause, he's in the club as well. So they've got him and Haaland, as well as Julian Alvarez as well. So they've got three players that can all play all up front. So they do play like this 4-4-2 formation. They did play up front though, Jeremy Doku, who had a very poor game. Bernardo Silva, he's obviously aging, he's 32 now. The physical attributes aren't really there, but they play him as like a central centre mid. And I'm not really sure what that is. Kevin De Bruyne, 35 years of age. His physicals are going. Obviously, we just had a bit of more of a physical midfield. We've got Jordan James alongside Jao Gomez, who's a bit more physical. He's brilliant, absolutely brilliant, De Bruyne, if they can get possession. But against us, they only had 51% possession. So they, they had probably the upper hand. We were at home. We had the better opportunity. Seven shots on target. We seemed to just hit them on the counter-attack, which is quite interesting. Either way, we had an absolutely brilliant game out there. Todd Cantwell picking up a goal as well. So that's Manchester City against Everton, a 2-1 win. Jashari getting a goal in the 96th minute. Todd Cantwell scoring. I mean, Cantwell's been doing really well for us as well, as you can see here. Then we beat Norwich. We've got Toplovich a brace with a penalty and a goal in the 64th minute. Cameron Archer getting a goal in the 48th himself. Then a loss to Nottingham Forest in the 91st minute. We probably should have drawn this game, but you can see the momentum there. Forest were always on top. They always had something going for them. We actually saw Chavlina go out with a injury, so we had to bring in one of our backup or under-21s goalkeepers, which was Forbes. Sean Forbes. So he's actually played a game. He's played one game, conceded one goal. He had a decent game, 7.1. Honestly, he had a pretty good game. Ethan Laird had a good one. Quanta came in, Luke Thomas. We had to rotate the side out because we had about three games all in the run of a few minutes. Then we played Leicester 5-1, an absolutely massive win for us. A, a rotation as well. Kim Christian Hyundal. I think that's the pronounce it. Hyundal. He's come in. He's my goalkeeper that I've signed for, I think it's 2.7 million. Yeah, I've signed him for 2.7. He was on loan back in Norway to Tromso and then we brought him in to Birmingham and wow he's had a brilliant first game yeah I've put him straight in for the FA Cup and the Premier League game because Javelina was still injured he's a little bit better than the other goalkeeper that we used which was Sean Forbes so he went in and oh wow it's 5-1 Jordan James got a goal Odinga managing to get one uh, in DA, an unlikely goal scorer got two, and then obviously in Zola as well, who had to rotate out. So we, we've been rotating the side out. Murray Hutchinson sitting behind the striker, Dinga, Jordan James, Al Gomez, Cantwell, and then you know pretty much the same elsewhere. We've been doing pretty well though. Harrogate, we beat five 0 We brought in our youngsters. We let Shaibu have a bit of a game out there. We got an assist. Molina came in. Dinga again. Patino had a great game. Jashari in there. Hernandez with that, that, that other game. He got a goal in there. He was one of our 18 year olds who looks fantastic. Luke Thomas is actually increasing. He's getting better. Kwanzaa coupled up with Daniel Ramirez, who's again one of our 18-year-olds who's in the under-21s. Then we played Kim and Christian Heyendahl as well. Yeah, I'm very happy with that. We played then against Bournemouth. Cameron Archer with a brace again. He's scored tons throughout the last few games. So I thought, you know what? I need to try and bring you an episode because Cameron Archer has been on fire as well as the fact that Topovich has been you know, back from injury. We've got Brunel back from injury. We're doing pretty well because our squad depth is unbelievable. I didn't really realise how good it was until, you know, we've actually been, been playing 
but we're actually really, really good. I can't really believe it, to be honest with you. I'm pleasantly surprised that this team is doing so, so well. This formation just suits us. And the way we play it, that you know, the wingers that cut inside. I don't know if you've ever seen this, but you can actually go into edit. You can choose your wingers, where you can tell them to cut inside with the ball. And that's what I like. They stay wide, as the winger would. They get further forward. They cross more, but they also dribble more. They cut inside. And that's the one. So they go out to the wings. And then they just pull in. And it just allows for like the pulling back, the low crosses. Arch is always there to pick it up. You know, it overloads. It becomes like a 4 2 3 1 narrow with like, you're essentially making this. That's what you're sort of doing, which is fantastic for me. And I've got to admit, I'm really enjoying this formation. And I might have to share it with you all because this. This is really doing me a world of good. And we're beating big, big teams. So we've got West Ham today. This is the game against sixth place, where we're probably battling out for European spots at the moment. I've got to be honest with you. Manchester United is the game I'll probably try and bring you next time. I think that'll be towards the end of the season. But I think, to be honest, we're going to be aiming for European football. If you look at the table in a minute, we've actually got quite a strong position. As you can see here, West Ham, not the strongest of sides. They've got an, not got an out-and-out -out striker. They've got Jared Bowen, who plays up front, who isn't like your typical like uh, advanced forward. He's more of a winger, if anything. But you can play there. If you look at the table there, West Ham and us sitting basically back to back there one point in it and again one point in it for Tottenham above us and then Manchester City sitting around seven points off us so if I just show you that there you go there you can you can see it better now so it's actually eight points off us they're sitting seven points off West Ham eight points off us Manchester City now if we can try and just try and edge them as best as we can to keep on top of Manchester City because they do pick up a lot of injuries as they just hit the post did ask uh, West Ham which is a bit, a bit of a shaky start for us, to be honest. But if we can try and keep that position, that would be brilliant because I'm trying to go for like maybe a conference league. I'd love a conference league run. I think then you can you, know, you can really try and entertain some big name players then to bring into the side as Bowen has been played beautifully in behind this goalkeeper. Oh, in behind this defender, should I say? And the goalkeeper, he's dinked the goalkeeper. He's going behind the goalkeeper. It's a great take by Jared Bowen. And we just need to encourage the side to tell them, come on, boys, we're better than this. Let's get going. It's going to be a battle between the, like the top nine sides. You can see here Liverpool and Tottenham. We're only four points off Liverpool at the moment. Five points off Arsenal. So it's very interesting. I'd like to just see how we can perform as Juice Behold has been played through by Ward Prowse. That is that is unbelievable. Why has he been left open? I don't know. Right, we need to change the opposition instructions. So I'm hoping that's good, that VAR doesn't count that. It's a, it's been awarded. It's been awarded. Yeah, look, why are they unmarked? Juice Behold just in acres of space. We know he's very good. And, yeah, comes off of Hutchinson, goes into the back of the net, much like Jordan James's goal last game that we've seen. Um, as There's a highlight straight from kickoff here. As Luke Thomas picks it up. Hutchinson, maybe they're going to listen to me as I've told him to shape up. And DA gets the ball now. Zhao Gomez in towards Topovic. Cameron Arch now. Can he maybe play through Campbell? He can. Campbell's thrown goal. We've replied straight away. Beautiful bit of interchange. Topovic to Archer in towards Cantwell, who you can see there cuts inside. That's the main one. Your wingers that we're musing, like you can see Amari Hutchinson there, I believe. You see Cantwell, he makes that like arched run inside because they tell him to cut inside. And Luis Jr., to, I don't know what the hell a goalkeeper's there. He's facing the wrong way for a star, but we have instantly replied with Todd Cantwell, who, by the way, I think he has the most combined goals and assists for our side. I think he actually does. And he's been an absolutely brilliant signing. I'm going to tell the lads to carry on. We've been playing okay. I think we might be best off going a little bit more cautious, for, to be honest with you, because we've been playing a little bit on the back foot for now. And if we can just maintain like this sort of run as, oh my life, Norman Bassett's just put it in the back of the net from a Bispo with a header on. Now, I have a feeling he was offside. It looked like he just wandered a little bit offside. The goal review's going to go. The goal's been disallowed, I thought so. But Cablina, we need to sort our defenders out because this is not going well for us whatsoever. A Bispo from our set pieces. Ah, we've played the offside trap well there, to be fair, though. We've done all right with that one. 53 minutes in. Let's see if we can just make a few more chances because the momentum's in our favour now. We've sort of sorted ourselves out. I've told the lad to shape up. And we're doing okay. We probably have to bring off Hutchinson and maybe Jao Gomez or James because they're just not looking like, yeah, they've not got the fitness to be playing like this. I have to maybe bring off one of the wing backs as well as the ball's been over the top again. They love this ball over the top. Do West Ham. I might actually sit just a little bit deeper just to try and contain it as the ball's been played out wide to Cantwell. We're playing it out from the back now. We're playing it pretty well as West Ham have pushed quite high 
from the pitch. Walker Peters into Toplovich, who takes it well. Passes it across to James, who finds Hutchinson. Hutchinson's strong goal. Can he finish? Amari Hutchinson puts it into the back of the net. Look at that from one side to the other. In a matter of seconds, Toplovich with a great turn into Jordan James, who plays it through. Look at that for a great little turn into Jordan James, who shifts it on towards Hutchinson, who makes that arc to run yet again inside. Plays it across the goalkeeper, Lewis Jr. No chance of saving that. And let's make some changes. So Jordan James, we're going to bring off, because he's looking a bit worse for wear. We're going to bring on Jashari to play in that role. Uh, in fact, no, Patino, sorry, to play in that role. Jao Gomez off, Jashari on as well. Toplovic, he's been playing it. He's had a good game, but we're going to take him off. We're going to put James McAtee in that position. And Amari Hutchinson's not had a great game. I know he's just scored, but we're going to put Adingra onto the pitch as well. Just to try and get, you know, a bit more fitness levels up. I think that's all I really need from us right now because at the moment it's not going you know it's, it's going well but we could be doing better I'm going to drop the defensive line a little bit deeper just because I know we're, put, we're pressing quite high up but the only difficulty is going to be with our defensive line is that we keep getting balls over the top into Bowen and it's scaring me it is scaring me because they're just so quick like this on the attack Bassett's there and I don't want that to happen again I don't want it to happen again I want us to drop a little bit deeper and it'll give the likes of Araujo and DA a bit of time to recover if they need to I think I'm be happy with a 2-1 win there because at the beginning of the game I thought it was going to be all over for us but we absolutely dominated the second half we changed up the tactic a little bit we told the lads come on do something you've got to change up here and they really did they had the momentum in the first i guess the first half of the first half you can see they got all their xg from that and then we sort of understood the assignment we put our position instructions on we knew to follow the likes of you know bassett the likes of we saw bowen as well who came off almada paqueta kudus we knew to follow them and then we sort of played them off the pitch to be honest jared bowen had a poor game jewsbury hull and ward prowse running the show and it was all from their set pieces but in play we actually played the better game which saw us win 2-1 and honestly it's looking good i tell you i'm actually re pleasantly pleasantly surprised with this squad i think our aim and the club vision if you look here is to become an established premier league team but we want to just all we want to do this year i think the board are looking for us to avoid relegation uh, let me just have a look sorry at competitions we're avoiding a relegation battle and our performance is a hundred percent at the moment it's a hundred percent so we're still on for an fa cup run the carabao cup we were knocked out by wolves they're not too bothered about that 60 percent We'll take it. What we're looking at is maybe a bit of an FA Cup run, and it'll be brilliant, absolutely fantastic, if you can look at the English Premier League division. And at the end of the season, we'll be in this top seven, potentially top eight, depending on who wins the uh, FA Cup, potentially a top eight in here. Because, honestly, if we could just stay in this position now, we're 13 points ahead of Manchester United. That's four games we can afford to lose towards the back end of the season that Manchester United have to win. I think, I think we're in good stead. Let's just see how the season goes. And yeah, I think I'll leave it there. So thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy the episode, please leave a like, subscribe if you are new, and just stay in touch. You know, get let me know down in the comments who you think we should be signing next year. We're looking pretty good so far, I've got to admit. We're, we're sitting in that fifth that fourth position now after the win against West Ham. I reckon this is gonna be a very, very surprising season. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. From me, Alex, have a great day. Ciao.